Definitely want your life here or see it's your time. Chosen one, the game is on. Your people are watching. And play the game and duel with all your honor and might. Demo Lego, we need you. Well, it's about that time. Let's get the show started. Hello, everyone. It is I, Commander Devin Linehart. And today, we're going on Wings of Glory as we're going to, ooh, overall, go after dragons. The, today is the top 10 glass cannons in Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragon Edition. Let's get on with it. Now, what qualifies as a glass cannon? A brief explanation is needed. One, the dragon must be level five, level six or higher. Anything below six is not worth it. Next, obviously, the overall monster must be an effect monster. Can't be normal or any other, as some of those already count as glass cannons in themselves. Other ones are not basic effect monsters. So, next, also we need to explain the glass cannon thing. The monster must not have a way to properly to protect itself from something or recover from its destruction. So without further ado, we got 15 dragon type monsters and even more than that, we got 10 of them as officially and five honorable mentions. So let's go. So at number 10, I wanted to go with something a little bit classy, a little bit sassy, and safe. As I decided to go with the overall Phantasmal May Dragon. Now this one's very unique. It was played for a while and it still sees some play in some decks. Let's read the effect, shall we? If your opponent special summons a Link Monster, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. Draw cards equal to the number of link monsters your opponent controls plus one shuffle these cards then shuffle cards from your hand to the deck equal to the number of link monsters they control when your opponent activates this card effect that targets a monster you control quick effect discard one card and negate the activation if you do destroy it you can only use each one of these effects once per turn now this gets somewhat as a pass as it protects other monsters but not itself. But the drawing effect is really cliche. It's at number 10 because it still sees play these days. But the 2400 attack and 1800 defense, eh, it's, it's just like another red eyes black dragon with that. And it's a level 7, so it is what it is. Next we're going on to number 9. 9, 9. Nine, number nine. Who is number nine? We're gonna go with, obviously, Prime Material Dragon. Any effect that would inflict damage to a player increases their life points by the same amount. This is the effect, by the way. Instead, during either player's turn, when this card is effectively activated, would destroy a monster on the field. You can send one card from your hand, negate the activation if you do destroy it. Now, this is at number nine. Because obviously, it does have a protection fallacy, but it's easily negatable. It cannot be, its effect cannot be negated itself, and it just destroys a card and negates the activation from the field. If it did it from the hand, that'd be good, but it can't, it can protect itself. And any effect you would take from Life point damage, let's just say, okay, you got five monsters on the field, player plays just desserts, where you're supposed to take 2,500 damage. Well, instead, you'll gain 2,500 life points, that which is mediocre in itself, but it's okay, especially for a level six, it's not bad. So we're gonna go on to number eight. Number eight is actually one of Jack Atlas's favorite monsters, Strong Wind Dragon. Let's take a look at him. Cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster that has the same attack. So obviously, that proves it's a um, Kaiser Glider. I really should have put a Kaiser Glider on here, but I didn't. If this card would, it is tribute summoned, tributing a dragon type monster, it gains an attack equal to half of the original attack of the tributed monster. If this card attacks a defense position monster, 
inflict piercing battle damage. So you not only get a attack boost by tributing a dragon, you not only get that I mean, dest protection destruction effect, but you get to inflict piercing battle damage. Now this is a monster I can get behind, but sadly due to its effect cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster with the same attack. That's the only problem. It, ha it cannot be destroyed with a monster with the same attack point value. But that's horrible. And that's why it's number eight. The original, the attack increase into the uh, piercing effect is actually why it's at number, I think, seven. Uh, one, or ten, nine, eight. Nope, that's eight. That's eight. I'm a, I'm a dingus. That's eight. Now, we're going to go on to number seven officially. So, we're going to go with Armed Dragon level ten. Let's take a look at him. Obviously, this is one of Chaz Princeton's classic cards. So, what is the effect? Cannot be normal summon or slash set. Back in the day, it used to be or set with the original printing. Must be special summon from your hand by attributing one Arm Dragon level seven. You can only send one card from your hand to the graveyard, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. Has no way to protect itself. Difficult of summoning, but you get to nuke all the monsters on the opponent's side of the field. If it was a quick effect, it would be better, but sadly, you can only do this on your turn. In the anime, I think it was kind of like a quick effect. I could be wrong. Please correct me in the comments. But the 3,000 attack and 2,000 defense, eh, is okay. Arm Dragon level 7 for a um, sacrificial lamb is quite a mediocre. Who summoned this monster? You could substitute its name with another card, but that'd be too difficult. Next card, as we're gonna go on to, I think number six now, as we're going with Chaos Emperor Dragon in the of the end. Now this card back in the day, when the tournaments were happening, what I understand was a terror in combat. There is a newer version that is a pendulum type. But we're not doing Pendulum Monsters. So, 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense, level 8. Let's read the effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing one light or one, one light and one dark monster from your graveyard once per turn. You can pay 1,000 light points to send as many cards in both players' hands and fields as possible to the graveyard. Inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card sent to the opponent's graveyard by this effect. You cannot activate this. You cannot activate other cards' effects during the turn this was activated. The cards' effect was activated. So basically, this was eroded, but even more so, more infamously, there's a secret in the Yu Gi Oh community that a lot, a lot of people know as these days because it's more like an urban legend as chaos emperor dragon was in an invasion of chaos special edition released as a limited edition card oh boy. so why was this an urban legend well it's not really an urban legend it's real <laughs> but uh the fact of the matter is the reason why I'm talking about this supposed urban legend is very important as there was a printing error on these limited editions. Now they are, are still out there on, on these unlimited editions, but sadly due to that, they're not really that worth that much. Chaos Emperor Dragon was a powerful card. But due to modern day Yu-Gi-Oh, it just, it just pales in comparison. Next, we're moving on to, let's see here, we got five. So we're moving on to number five. Gandora, Dragon of Destruction. Ooh, boy, let's bring on the apocalypse with this one. Because I'm going to get roasted in the comments. Please do it respectfully. Cannot be special summoned. 
you must pay half of your life points to destroy as many cards on the field as possible. Other than this card. If this card, and if you do banish them, this card gains 300 attack for each card destroyed in this way. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summon, flip summon, send this card to the graveyard. Now, obviously, this has an entire, like, uh, possibility of nuking both boards, basically. And when this card came out, it was a Shonen Jumps promo. I still have my original and also another version of Shonen Jumps promo, Grandora. It has been reprinted, I think, about two, maybe three times. But the Shonen Jumps will always be king of this one, and I know there's like one, two, three, four other versions of this. One of them still in Japan, one yet to come out. 18 cents for the Shonen Jumps promo? Holy freaking crud. I'm betting that's the common version. We're moving on to number four. Now, number four, we're gonna go with Judgment Dragon. Now, this thing was in tournament play for the longest time. I mean, a lot of tournament play, good lord. As in light decks, this thing with light swarms would rip and tear until it is done. Not from the attack, but from the effect itself, but it's still considered a glass cannon. So let's look at it. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be special summon from your hand. By having four or more light sworn monsters with different names in your graveyard. That's not too difficult these days for that effect that literally happened. You can pay 1,000 life points to destroy all other cards on the field. Once per turn during your end phase, send the top four cards of your deck to the graveyard. So, ooh. Interesting enough, you can destroy everything on the field. Other than Judgment Dragon. That means if you have more than one Judgment Dragon on the field, you can do a lot of damage. And even more so, at the end of your turn, you just send uh, four cards from your, obviously, top of your deck to the graveyard per Judgment Dragon. It's not just... If you have three, it's not like you just use one Judgment Dragon effect to send the top four cards, no. You send up to 12 cards of your deck to the graveyard. This is supposed to be an instant kill move for an all-out attack. Sadly, if the opponent has a hand trap, you're screwed. So, yeah, Judgment Dragon is at number four. Now, at number three... I decided to go with one of the worst tunes known the man, Toon, Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. I know, I know, but Devin is one of Pegasus' classic cards. I don't give a darn. The card suffers from, um, when it's no literal summoned from attacking the first turn. Also, it's a level 8, each, and must be for a special summon from your hand by tributing to monsters. Now, it can be normal summon, but, slash set, but first must be special summon from your hand by tributing two monsters. That means you already gotta have two monsters on the field to special summon this guy. And you cannot attack the turn it was special summoned, or even summoned in general. You must pay 500 life points to declare an attack with this monster. If Toon World's not on the field, it's nuked, along with any other tune on the field. Obviously, it has no way to be protected from its own destruction effect, but Toon World, or uh, Toon Kingdom, covers for that these days, as it's a Toon World field spell. But Toon Blue Eyes still suffers from too powerful and you're too slow. Type play, so hardly anybody plays Toon Blue Eyes. It's more of a collector's value thing. We're going on to number two. Now, number two, I want to go with 10,000 Dragon. This thing is literally has one rarity, and it's one of the most expensive dragons you can get a hold of normally. So, what makes it the worst? Let's find out what qualifies this as a glass cannon. Let's look into its effect. Cannot be normal summon, must be special summon 
by tributing monsters you control with a combined attack of 10,000 or more. If summoned this way, the attack of this card becomes 10,000 attack points. Now, obviously, this was released due to this being the 10th thousand printed new card in Yu-Gi-Oh! So it took about 10,000 original cards before 10,000 Dragon came out. God, I gotta love my voice acting sometimes, and that's gonna rip me apart. My voice apart. Overall, this card has no protection, but it's one huge beat stick. Need I say more? Now we're gonna go with the honorable mentions. At honorable mention number one, we have Meta Dragon Zetrot. Not good, not bad. What makes it unique? If a spell or trap card you control leaves the field because of the opponent's card effect, this is now in and is now in your graveyard or banished. Except they're in the damage step. You can special summon this card from your graveyard. If this card was sent there by spell or trap that left your hand or not even when you set a spell or trap banished from your graveyard in the spell and trap zone, you can use this effect of mana dragon Zetron once per turn. So, no matter what, as long as the spell or trap card leaves the field, you summon it. Okay. Not really a good dragon, but not really a bad dragon. More like an okay dragon for a quick summon. White Dragon Ninja cannot be special summoned except with Ninjutsu Art. This card effects. Spell traps you control cannot be you destroyed by card effects. Dark Magician the Dragon Knight, anyone? Basically, but with 300 attack points weaker. Eh. All Eye Saber Dragon, this came out in the structure deck. If this card is in your hand, you can tribute one light monster and send one All Eyes Dragon from your hand or deck. Or your side of the field with this to this to the graveyard. If you do special summon this card, when this destroys an opponent's monster by the by battle, sends it to the graveyard. You can destroy one monster your opponent controls. 2,800 attack. No way to recover. No way to overall protect yourself. Blast cannon. Red Eyes alternative black dragon. Now everyone was hyped. When this card was literally leaked, as they thought it was going to be the next big Red Eyes. Everybody wanted this Red Eyes. Sadly, when it actually came out, all we got was... <sighs> I'm disappointed. Obviously. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by tributing one Red Eyes monster from your hand or field. You can only special summon Red Eyes alternative to black dragon once per turn this way. This card is destroyed by battle. If destroyed by battle or a card effect in the owner's possession by an opponent's card effect, you can target one level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster in your graveyard except Red Eyes on turn to black. Special summon it. If it was a Red Eyes black crack, again, that special summon and its attack becomes double. So it does have a recovery effect. And it doubles the Red Eyes Black Dragon's effect. Here's the thing. It should have gave the Red Eyes some type of immunity when it summons a Red Eyes Black Dragon from the graveyard. That would have been better, and we would have seen more play. And honestly, just any Red Eyes monster special summon it, that means Red Eyes Black Baby Dragon, Red Eyes Black Chick, Red Eye Gear Free, the Red Eyes Iron Knight, Age, um... Red Eyes Black Meteor, I mean Red Eyes Meteor Dragon. Uh, Red, eye, uh, uh, sum, Red Eyes Summons uh, Skull or Archfiend. I mean, basically, any one of these Red Eyes monsters, as long as you have it on the field, tribute it, boom, you get that out. That's pretty easy. Even Red Eyes, um, I think, uh, Chick can even use to summon this, or Stone of Red Eyes even. That's why it's Honorable Mention. Now we got two. Which one's the Honorable Mention, and which one is the number one spot? Well, in the Honorable Mentions, sadly, we 
got Malefic Troop Dragon. Don't get me wrong, it's okay, but god dang is it a pain to summon. Let's find out. Cannot be normal summon slash set. Must be special summon by its own effect. Cannot be special summoned by other ways. Even if a malefic if a malefic monster you control, except malefic troop dragon, is destroyed by battle or card effect, you pay half of your life points to special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. There can only be one malefic monster on the field, no other field. If there's no oh, face-up field spell on the field, destroy this card. If this card is destroyed by an opponent's monster, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So, even if they destroy it, they lose all their monsters. If there's no field spell, it cannot exist. If a malefic monster is not destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon it. This stems from, obviously, Movie Nidus, as it was a movie card, and even in the movie it was difficult to summon, as you needed to sacrifice three cards that were, one of them was a spell card, and I think the other two were traps, or the other way around. This card, Malefic Truth Dragon, is an honorable mention, just because it is easier to summon out uh, in the actual game. But if you don't have a field spell, you're screwed. Ooh. Now let's put the pound down and go on to number one. Biggest glass cannon. Light and darkness dragon. Oh boy. Now I'm going to get roasted again. As light and darkness dragon is one of the, yeah, back in the day, most played tournament cards. Here is why. It is literally considered a mediocre these days. Cannot be special summoned while this card is face up on the field. This also becomes a dark attribute. Once per chain during either player's turn. When a spell card or trap card or monster effect is activated, this card exactly loses 500 attack and defense. And if the activation was negated, when this card is destroyed, sent to the graveyard, target one monster in your graveyard, if possible, destroy all cards you control and special summon that monster, if any. So, it has a negation effect, a spell trap or monster effects. It loses 500 attack. If you got a whole ton of equip spells, like Mage's Power, United We Stand, okay, you can keep it around for a bit longer. But... When this card is destroyed, sent to the graveyard, target one monster in your graveyard, if possible, and destroy all other cards you control. You can special summon this monster. So even, let's just say, you have a Blue Eyes, Blue Eyes Ultimate, and Light and Darkness Dragon. What's gonna happen when it's destroyed? All right, you lose your big aces. What the hell? Obviously, this monster was good for the negation feature, but as soon as it became ineffective and weak enough, somebody can attack it and just nuke your field. As this is the top number one glass cannon in dragons, I truly believe Light and Darkness Dragon deserves where it needs to be. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, as we were in Wings of Glory, next time. We're going to be riding on the overall battlefield with the warrior. I'm a warrior. That's right. That's right. I'm a warrior. You don't mess with me. So we're going to be riding with warriors overall, joining the army, as we're literally going with warriors next time. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I have been Commander Devin Lionheart. Please like subscribe comment down below if you agree with this list or not heck I don't really give a darn just make sure it's overall not cancerous and even more so don't forget to share this video with all your friends I am out later Woo! hey everyone don't forget to like and subscribe tell me how much y'all thought of the video furthermore don't forget overall to 
Show me some love by clicking on the video to the left. Top left, you got a video. Bottom left, you got a stream. Later, everyone. I'm going to start working.